Is gravity a social construct? Gravity is very real. I feel it on my morning run as I slog up the hill towards my house. A scientist I know likes to say, if you don't believe in gravity, feel free to put your belief to the test by stepping out of my office one day. No one seriously doubts that a fall from a sixth floor office window is going to end badly. And because any reasonable person would agree, it makes sense to call this an objective fact. Knowing that falling is going to hurt doesn't depend on who you are or what culture or society you come from. So the effects of gravity are something that reasonable people will agree on. But what causes these effects? This is where the debate between scientists and philosophers gets going. Gravity and the science we use to explain gravity are not the same. The surprising thing is that scientists are pretty sure the scientific theory of gravity is wrong. Einstein's theory of general relativity assumes that space and time are infinitely divisible into smaller and smaller pieces. If you pull two bits of space apart, Einstein assumed that you'd always find more space in between. But experiments have shown that eventually it becomes impossible to make a ruler with a finer grid, or a stopwatch that measures smaller and smaller instants of time. Einstein's theory can't deal with this. It doesn't work on very small scales. The assumptions Einstein made are wrong. Even though scientists know this, they still use Einstein's theory. Recently, scientists spent more than half a billion dollars to build LIGO, a detector designed to look for gravitational waves. It's something predicted by Einstein's theory 100 years ago, but never seen before. Early in 2016, they found these waves, for which some of them will no doubt get a Nobel Prize. Scientists like to say that while all theories are wrong, some are useful. One day scientists would like to replace Einstein's theory with one that also describes what happens to space and time at very small scales. We've been at this sort of crossroads before. Isaac Newton's theory of gravity, developed 400 years ago, said that gravity was an attractive force between objects that have mass. Einstein made his breakthrough by wondering whether gravity wasn't a force after all. He thought it was a side effect of curved space-time. It's a beautiful idea that works beautifully. It is still useful to think of gravity as a force, particularly if you're considering stepping outside your office window, but thinking of gravity as a force is a construct, a useful construct, but one we know does not truly describe our world. Thomas Kuhn, a 20th century philosopher of science, famously described the transition from one theory to the next as a paradigm shift. Kuhn argued that science changes paradigms when scientists develop a theory that successfully describes more of the world than their current theory. So can we just choose any old theory we like? The particular theory that a scientist decides to work with relies on their judgement, but, and this is crucial, they have to defend their judgement to other scientists. Other scientists will compare it to experimental evidence. They will test the logic to see if it is self-consistent. They will question whether the theory used is fit for purpose. Do you need to know the speed at which the egg will hit the ground? Or do you need to measure the stretching of space a thousand times smaller than an atomic nucleus? Science, while it relies on individual judgments, is a social process by which those judgments have to be defended to other scientists. Science works best when ideas are tested by empirical evidence put together from a variety of individual viewpoints. Most scientists would say that general relativity is closer to a true description of gravity than Newton's theory. But most scientists who want to improve on general relativity discard it at the outset. Only a hardy few try to build on it. Proponents for string theory and quantum loop gravity fight it out in scientific papers, popular books and even TV shows. Right now there is not enough evidence to sway either group. The way that scientists think of gravity today depends on who they are and the experiences that have shaped them. This is an uncomfortable idea for scientists. But if all theories are wrong, as us scientists like to say, it is a feeling we must get used to. So next time you meet a scientist at a party, tell them, gravity is a social construct.